Hey guys, do you wish to learn how to create 3D stuff on the web? You must have seen sites like uh, the iPhone 13, how they display 3D stuff. And you know, like 3D animations with their 3D models of their phones. So the way you could do that is through 3JS, one of the most popular libraries for 3D animations on the web. And if you are using React, you would use React 3 Fiber and React 3 Ray with it. If you wish to learn how to use that, well, I'm going to teach you in this series of maybe five or six videos. So let's get started. I'm Sohil and I'm excited. So let's talk about 3JS. Why would you need 3JS? Well, you see that uh, how the DOM is arranged. Uh, you can't really create 3D stuff. It's made for more for 2D web elements. So you have stuff like divs and buttons and navigation bars and footers, but you really don't have 3D stuff. But if you wish to create 3D stuff, you need some sort of graphics library. Now WebGL is a library that allows you to create 3D stuff. The problem with WebGL is that it is way too complicated. It's way too low level and that's why it is complicated. What 3JS does is that it gives you a layer of abstraction over WebGL. So it allows you to create stuff without bothering about how it is implemented, just like any high level language would. So we're gonna get started with knowing the basics of 3JS, but we're gonna learn how to use 3JS with React. So we're going to learn three, the concepts of 3JS, but we're going to implement those with React 3 Fiber and React 3 Dray, and I'm going to explain to you every step of the way. So we're going to have discussions on the theory of stuff, and we're going to see it happening with code. So that's how I'm going to proceed. This, this is the first part of the video, and let's get started. So we will start by initializing our project. I'm going to use the VJS. Uh, if you don't know what VJS is, just type VJS on your browser and you'll be going to this site. Now, if you have used Create React app in your uh, projects, well, that's good. But the one problem I faced was that it took way too long for the dev server to get started. Vt goes one step further by just, you know, I mean, if you use Vt, you will see that it's so much fast. Like if your create react app took three minutes to get started v would take less than a second and you're gonna see so in order to use v to initialize the react project what you're gonna do is go to your terminal i already have initialized my project so i'm not gonna show you but uh i'm gonna show you the commands that you can use so uh, let me zoom in my screen mm -mm -mm. what ah uh, yeah so right here you're going to use npx to execute an npm uh, module and you're, then you're going to type create vt and then maybe if it's the first time that you're using create vit it would show you if you want to install the package go ahead and say yes it doesn't show here because i already have installed it so you're going to name your project something so maybe i don't know three tutorial i'm not going to do that i mean i'm not going to go all the way because i already have uh the same project just ready here so that, that i could show you so we have three tutorial here select the framework as react and go ahead and select well react or you could select typescript if you want i suggest just go with javascript for now if you wish to explore typescript well feel free go with react and it's going to create a folder that you can then go in it's going to create a folder called free tutorial with the name that you just created and go inside and run yarn it's gonna install a few packages and then you'll be off to a good start but you also need a couple of extra packages well for 3js and stuff so go ahead run yarn add free you because you need the 3js package you uh, write react 3 fiber and write react 3 3 and we all also would explore a bit of animations with gsap so go ahead and install gsap as well i'm not going to do that here because like i said i have these packages downloaded and ready to go once the packages are done you can start your dev server i'm going to run here on dev my dev server started if you are using read for the first time observe how quickly it started 
I mean, if it was create weird app, it would still have taken a few seconds, even with an empty project. Weed just takes a split second and it's off to go. We'll come here, we'll open the console just in case we need to do some debugging and stuff. We got a local host 3000, and right now everything is blank as expected. So, uh, let's go into a bit of a theory, right? I'm gonna explain with GIMP because I mean, I need something to draw upon, and uh, I think V does, does the job, so yeah. So, let's talk about how uh, 3JS handles stuff before we actually jump into the code because it's gonna help you in order to un understand and I think game developers will have a better time understanding so but yeah regardless even if you do not have any background with 3D development you're gonna have no difficulty in, a, in understanding so imagine this you have uh, you're in a room right you are standing somewhere yeah that's stick figure that's you yeah <laughs> you're standing in a room and around you are stuff say there is your bed on the room it's here it's a horrible looking bed looks more like an alien spaceship or whatever it's your bed right here maybe there's a table lamp somewhere so and you are standing right in the middle now the room everything in the room your this table lamp this uh this bed everything in the room on the walls everything you see is what we call a scene in 3js terminology we call that a scene a scene comprises of all the stuff you see and then there's something called the camera the camera is well your eyes the thing that captures the scene is called a camera and just imagine now in place of you there is another person in the room and let's say he is standing right here for some reason he's standing right to the edge of the bed and looking at you and uh, so you're gonna have two cameras in this scene and although you're looking at the same scene the image that would be captured by the eyes of this person would be very different from the image captured by this person obviously because there are different positions they're looking at different things and they're looking at different angles you get the point right and therefore they will capture different images the way 3js works is that you have a scene you have a camera that looks at the scene and you combine them together the renderer takes both of them and uses the camera to capture an image of the scene and then it projects it onto your screen and that is one render circle render cycle not circle slip of tongue so that's one render cycle if you run that loop again and again what you're gonna see is that the renderer will continue to look at the scene and draw whatever it sees on your screen now if it seems like too much of theory let me show you the 3js way of doing it but we won't be doing it like that because we're using react 3 fiber i'm going to tell you what react 3 fiber is and why would you need that and if you are learning 3js what's react 3 fiber doing here i'm going to tell you but let me take you to 3js's website and we see well let's go to create a scene just go to 3js.org or search for 3js on google and come to this page and scroll below now Observe what they say when you're creating a scene like I described We make a scene we make a camera ignore what's perspective camera for now I'm gonna explain all of that. So we have a scene. We have a camera We make a renderer. What's a renderer? Well, like I said a renderer is what well, the meaning of the word is when you are creating an image you're going to see here that they say WebGL renderer because, well, you need to create 3D stuff. So you need to use a renderer that understands 3D. That's WebGL. You're going to take your renderer and you're going to tell the renderer to set a canvas element on the DOM. Understand this. There is no 3D in the DOM. There is nothing. In the truest sense, there is nothing 3D when it comes to your screen because everything is two-dimensional. What WebGL does is that it kind of applies transformations on 
th- in on seemingly 3D stuff and even though it's actually 2D it's going to create an illusion as if it's 3D that's webgl for you and the renderer works like that so and the way you can uh, render out that into the dom is by using a canvas element the canvas element, you don't have to control that on your own. And that's the beauty of WebGL and 3JS is that they control it for you. All you got to do is take that canvas element, put it somewhere in your DOM, style it with a little bit of CSS. And by style it, I mean set the heights and the widths. And you're going to have a screen, uh, I mean a place that displays whatever the renderer captures. And whatever the renderer captures it is what the camera sees. And what the camera sees is the scene. So you're going to have your 3D scene where the canvas element is present and we're going to see that right now. So just uh, ignore the code, just get the basic idea of what is happening in 3JS because we're going to use React 3 Fiber. So why do we need React 3 Fiber in the first place if that if this solves our issue? Well, you know how React is like it manages its own JavaScript context. So if you were to write this code somewhere, maybe you create a file inside that you put this code and then uh, document or body or append child, you did this. Now React doesn't like anyone else interfering with their DOM directly without using the React methods of DOM manipulation. And even if you do execute this, it would be executing in a different context. You wouldn't want that. So in order to ensure that you can create, I mean, do stuff like this, in React, there's a package called React 3 Fiber that allows you to use a component styled way to create 3D stuff. I mean, to create scenes, cameras, whatever. And we're going to get started on that. So go ahead inside that directory, open it in VS Code or any other ID that you are familiar with. I've gone ahead and already cleared some stuff up, but I'm going to explain what I did now. The first things first. Like I said, we need to render out a canvas element. So the way a VJS works, if you do not know how VJS works, it's very similar to create React app. You have a singular file while you have uh, which imports, I mean, which renders uh, a DOM for React. So you're going to have this main.jsx file here that is rendering the app component inside the root. And then this app itself, let's jump to the app is rendering out this thing. I'm going to explain what that is. So like I said, you're going to need a canvas, right? Now, ignore whatever you saw on that site, on that 3 years documentation, React 3 Fiber does things a bit differently. So here you see canvas imported straight from React 3 Fiber, and that manages the 3D for us. So we have canvas here. Here's an ID because this needed to be styled because when you create a canvas, you're going to see that it won't span the entire height of the web page. It won't. So in order to handle that, we I simply set an ID here and with the style sheet, I set its height to 100% of the viewport height. So it spans the whole page. I also went ahead and set a background color of a little off-white here. I don't know if it's it should be called off white but yeah i said the background color so what the grayish color you see here is actually from the body and the canvas itself is transparent because there's nothing in it for now so you're gonna see this color even if the canvas does appear that's it and now let's go back to app so you we have a canvas now understand this if you don't know what suspense is well you see uh when you are loading the DOM with React, uh, sometimes it may happen that some of the content might be set for getting loaded later. You might be asynchronously loading something, maybe a component that's too big and you want to render it only when there's a certain condition. So you don't want to prepackage it in a bundle and send it and only send it later if it's needed. Sometimes it can be um, some payload that's way too big. So you were setting it for an asynchronous loading later. What suspense does is that it allows you to write lazy loading components. It means uh, like say for example that this component here, let's say it's huge. Say it's two megabytes of a payload, right? 
so let's say it's two megabytes but you want to display some sort of loading image or some sort of something at least before this gets loaded so you want your dom to be completely loaded then you want to go and fetch this three component i just named it three you can call it whatever you want that's why you we use as we call a suspense write suspense pass it a fallback what fallback is is that it allows you to pass in an element a react element so whatever you pass here would be displayed while in the background this component would be fetched and then the moment the loading completes for this inner component the fallback will be substituted with the actual component and you're going to need this with react 3 fiber because later on we are, we are going to make some asynchronous requests so go ahead inside the canvas elements there are suspense also remember since you are inside the canvas stuff like div has no meaning inside canvas because you are no longer in the dom right you are inside canvas so div has no meaning just so you know so you, you can't create dom stuff just yet but that being said if you do need to create well there is an a handy helper for that and it comes straight from re okay let me just html you're gonna see the moment i type this it's gonna auto complete and import html from react 3 dre what dre is is that it has some good helpers that will make your life easy if you're working with react 3 fiber type html here and inside this element whatever you write is now going to get rendered to the dom even if it's inside canvas so div here will have its meaning i think it's uh no there's a body element you go straight up write stuff but you are already in body understand this the canvas itself is in the body so whatever you, you write here if you create another body it's going to throw some sort of error so whatever you write here would be rendered out as a dom element so maybe you want to display some text here's how you would do that we don't need this for now so we can omit this but i showed you this because you might want to render something like this inside the fallback maybe it would be useful for you if you did so we're gonna yeah we're gonna do this and uh yeah so inside three is where we would be working basically and what is three well let's jump to what's three now let's we'll say this and remove this import now let's come to here uh ignore what's this ambient light here for now so remember that we are in the context of um the suspense right we are inside the context of suspense so whatever we create here would be actually rendered by the renderer on your screen so but you might be then asking well what wait what is the scene where is the camera well, what React 3 Fiber does internally is that it gives you a default camera, a default scene that you don't need to set. It gets set by itself. So even if you render out nothing, it's going to show you an empty scene. An empty scene is still a scene, right? It's not null. There is a scene. You can't see it. It's default. In the next part of this tutorial, we are going to start creating actual 3d elements and i'm going to run you over the theory and then i'm going to code it out for you so if you like this part of the video please do like leave comments or you can simply connect with me on twitter i'm active over there so if there's anything you want to say anything anything any suggestions that you want to give to me please feel free to connect i'll see you in the next video i hope you like this one